Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Not Me and today we're going to discuss your large vessels of the gut chapter. So guys, what happens is your entire gut has three parts we've already talked about. These are the foregut, midgut and the hindgut and each part of the gut in the embryonic life had its own blood supply which was from the aorta's three major ventral branches, ventral or anterior branches. These were the celiac trunk for the foregut, the superior mesenteric artery for the midgut, inferior mesenteric artery for the hindgut, right? So today I'm going to discuss the first ventral branch of the abdominal aorta known as the celiac trunk and how it supplies the foregut structures. And in the next videos, we'll discuss all of these branches in detail. To all of those who haven't subscribed yet to my channel, I make anatomy a piece of cake, so you should go ahead and subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. Let me just go ahead and explain to you what is happening here. This is your abdominal cavity. Of course, uh, this is the T12 and L1 vertebra. Let's suppose this vessel that I've drawn is the aorta, right? This is basically lying in the most posterior part of the abdominal wall, the aorta, right? And uh, this is the liver that is basically covering your entire right hypochondrium and covering this part, but I had to uh, draw it a little up so that you know, we can uh, visualize structures, what is happening here, right? Uh, then we had the lower end of the esophagus becoming the stomach. And from the stomach, we have the first part of the duodenum. Within the C-shape, we saw the head of the pancreas going all the way to the spleen. And the spleen was lying on the extreme left, as you can see over here. Fine. Now let's talk about the celiac trunk. Now, celiac trunk is one of the ventral branches of the aorta that arise right after the aorta leaves your aortic opening of the diaphragm. The ventral branch called the celiac trunk is originating at the level of junction of the T12 and L1 vertebra. Now the interesting part about the celiac trunk is that it begins and only about 1.25 centimeter it will last and after that it terminates by dividing into its three terminal branches. These are the left gastric artery, common hepatic artery, splenic artery. Among these branches, the splenic artery is the largest branch of the celiac trunk. So let's go ahead and talk about these branches in detail. As the name says it, the first branch, suppose this is the celiac trunk now, all right? Uh, the first branch is left gastric artery. It's quite obvious that this artery should go to the left side towards the gastric area. Now I want you to remember as a general rule, all these arteries will need a peritoneal fold or a pathway or a road to travel in, right? These peritoneal folds are going to be incorporated in these arteries courses, right? So remember that. So let's talk about the left gastric artery first. Uh, this is actually going to be a challenge for you guys too. You guys are going to tell me what peritoneal fold will lie where when these arteries are going to travel. So let's talk about the left gastric artery. The first artery that arises, it runs towards the left. Obviously, it's the left and it goes close to the cardiac end of the stomach. After which it enters, what peritoneal fold can it enter over here? What area is this? This is the lesser curvature of the stomach. Test your knowledge. It's the lesser omentum. It enters, the left gastric artery enters in the lesser omentum when it reaches close to the lesser curvature of the stomach. It runs along the curvature and ends by anastomosing with the right gastric artery, which is the same artery but of the right side, right? So that is the course of the left gastric artery. During its course, it will give many gastric branches to supply the lesser curvature of the stomach. And it also gives a couple of esophageal branches to supply the esophagus. The next artery is the common hepatic artery. So we all know, talking about the name of the artery, that it has to do something with the liver. The liver is lying, lying towards the right side. So this obviously artery should go towards the right side. Here comes the common hepatic artery. Now what it does, the common hepatic artery approaches the first part of the duodenum's upper border. When it approaches the upper border, it enters your free right margin of what peritoneal fold lies over here that connects your lesser curvature and the first part of duodenum to the liver. Once again, it's the lesser omentum. And this will be entering the free right margin of that lesser omentum. So this is the lesser omentum. It enters the free right margin of the lesser omentum and the common hepatic artery at this point changes its name to the proper hepatic artery. 
all right proper hepatic artery runs in the free right margin of the lesser omentum along with other structures these are the bile duct and the portal vein that also have to go to the liver they share the same pathway within the right free margin of the lesser omentum also known as the anterior boundary of the epiploic foramen i hope you remember and once it reaches your liver it divides into right and left hepatic branches within the porta hepatis and supplies your liver let's talk about the branches of the common hepatic artery right so the first branch or you can say the continuation of the common hepatic artery is the proper hepatic artery uh, on the upper border of the first part of the duodenum apart from this the common hepatic artery gives the branch arising at the upper border of the first part of the duodenum this is known as the gastroduodenal artery i hope you remember we studied in the relations of the duodenum that posterior to the first part of the duodenum lies a very important artery the gastroduodenal artery never forget this because it's an important relation even for the duodenum even for the branch of the common hepatic artery so this uh, branch it runs downwards remember it is running posterior to the first part of the duodenum when it reaches the lower border here it divides into its two terminal branches the gastroduodenal artery uh, has to give a branch over here and then it gives a branch over here so when it gives a branch towards the left side what do you think it will supply this branch will be known as the right gastro epiploic artery all right and where do you think that the right gastro epiploic artery will run inside within so we all know that the greater omentum is lying over here that is the peritoneal fold that your right gastro epiploic artery will run inside and once it runs inside it goes along the greater curvature within the greater omentum and it ends by anastomosing with the left gastro epiploic artery we've discussed this in the stomach blood supply and then another branch that the gastroduodenal gave towards your right side that is going to run within the pancreatic duodenal groove within the c shape of it this is the superior pancreatic duodenal artery and we discussed this in the duodenum blood supply this artery is responsible for supplying the pancreas as well as the duodenum and it ends by anastomosing with the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery that we'll talk about in a while up 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 to now i hope the concept is quite clear we have uh, touched the stomach blood supply before that's why uh, i'm sure it's easier for you to understand this right next branch of the common hepatic or more specifically the proper hepatic artery is going to give the next branch the proper hepatic artery gives a branch called the right gastric artery so the right gastric artery is going to arise and it will run towards the lesser curvature within what the which peritoneal fold the lesser omentum and it ends up supplying your lesser curvature and anastomosis with the left gastric artery here's a full circle completed right it's very important that you go sequence wise you will understand anatomy better that way uh, rather than looking at the picture and obviously that is quite overwhelming and intimidating and you won't probably want to touch your books further so it's very necessary that you go step wise learn the uh, tiny details and then overall you'll realize you made the same diagram as you were looking at and you actually got scared of that but guess what it was actually a pretty simple concept so moving on and finally your proper hepatic artery when it's once it enters the porta hepatis through its right hepatic branch it gives the cystic artery which will supply cystic meaning the gall bladder right so the cystic artery is another important branch related to the common hepatic artery next let's move ahead and talk about the third branch of the celiac trunk which is the largest branch of the celiac trunk uh this branch is known as the splenic artery and since it's the splenic artery you know it's going to run towards your left side so it arises from the celiac trunk it goes towards the left side and this artery will run posterior to the stomach and as it runs posteriorly it crosses your kidney and the left suprarenal gland and because it's crossing the kidney uh which peritoneal fold do you think it will enter into to reach the spleen this will be the leno renal ligament we've talked about this this uh, peritoneal fold before if you haven't you should go ahead and watch that embryologic peritoneum video within the leno renal ligament because that is a pathway that will get you to the spleen from the kidney so you can say it's like a road made from the kidney to the spleen is going to reach your spleen right here you can see this is the spleno renal ligament right and once it reaches the spleen it will give splenic branches to supply the spleen and those are not all the branches of the splenic artery there are more 
the splenic artery during its course since you can see the pancreas is this organ right here close to your entire area where the splenic artery is actually going to traverse uh, rather the splenic artery is actually going to be running on the upper border of the pancreas the whole time right so this is the pancreas your splenic artery is basically running on the upper border of the pancreas and suppose here is the kidney if within the lenorelar ligament it enters your spleen fine so what happens now is that uh, during the splenic arteries course, uh, it gives the pancreatic branches to supply the body and the tail of the pancreas. All right. Apart from this, the splenic artery will also give five to seven short gastric arteries that supply the fundus of the stomach. These short gastric arteries will arise from the terminal part of the splenic artery. They won't arise here, rather they'll arise from the terminal part. Now, how do I get from spleen to the stomach? Now, there should be a road to get me from the spleen to the stomach, a peritoneal fold. And what is this peritoneal fold? This time, it's the gastrosplenic ligament, all right? So these five to seven short gastric arteries within the gastrosplenic ligament reach the fundus of the stomach and supply your stomach's fundus. There is still one area that we have to supply related to the stomach. And what is this area? right here you can see the greater curvature is still empty and the right gastroepiploic artery has no one to anastomose with so let's provide this artery with a partner the splenic artery's terminal part yet again will give another branch known as the left gastroepiploic artery which runs in the greater omentum and ends up anastomosing with the right gastroepiploic artery and supplying your greater omentum plus your greater curvature of the stomach so these were overall all the celiac trunk branches and the branches of those branches. I really hope that makes sense. Join me in the next video where we'll discuss the superior mesenteric artery. Thank you so much for watching.